how do the roller coasters at Knott's Berry Farm stack up against each other? Let's find out today on Theme Park Crazy. Last week, I visited Knott's Berry Farm in Buena Park, California. It was a wonderful, beautiful theme park with stunning scenery, great food, excellent entertainment, and of course, a stellar selection of roller coasters. This park really does have something for everyone, from the small-scale kiddie coasters to the A-list extreme ones. Of course, in my habit of listing things out, I like to rank these attractions from my least to most favorite. So here's how I rank every roller coaster at Knott's Berry Farm. Number 10 is Timberline Twister, a kiddie coaster by American manufacturer Bradley & K. As a kiddie coaster, this is naturally coming in last place, but for what it's worth, it does its job quite well. I fully realize that I'm not the kind of audience this ride was meant for. In fact, if it wasn't for the generosity of park officials to ace members during CoasterCon, I would have been too tall to ride this one without a child. These are the kind of rides that small children can work up their courage on, and if you're a SoCal thrill seeker, this may have been your first coaster. As such, these kind of rides are extremely significant to many. For what it's worth, it definitely has a unique feel as opposed to other kiddie coasters I've ridden, and even adults may get some airtime on those wavy hills towards the end. If you have kids or just aren't ready for the bigger coasters, go ahead and give this ride a shot. Number 9 is Coast Rider, a wild mouse coaster by German manufacturer Mock Rides. This is by far the smoothest wild mouse I've ridden so far, which is not surprising considering it opened in 2013. Much like other wild mouse coasters, this ride has an emphasis on tight switchback turns, giving the illusion you're about to fly off the rails. I will admit, Coast Rider wasn't as forceful or intense as other rides of its kind. I also wasn't a fan of the leg bars under the lap bars. However, I rode this with a friend who is much smaller than I am, and he thought the ride was great. So if you're a skinnier rider, the shin guards may not be as big of an issue for you. And overall, with its small footprint and accessibility for lighter thrill seekers, Coast Rider is certainly a great fit for the park. Number 8 is Jaguar, a Tivoli coaster by German manufacturer Zier. This is another good coaster to start off with if you're not ready for the intense attractions. It is unquestionably a family coaster, and it's definitely a tame ride. That's certainly not a bad thing though, as it does exactly Exactly what it sets out to do. It's meant to be a relaxing, scenic ride that goes over the park paths and past the bigger coasters. You get great views of Sierra Sidewinder and Silver Bullet, and it even goes through the loop of Montezuma's Revenge. Just imagine going through there while the train circles around you. Another thing I want to point out is the excellent theming of the queue line and the station. The queue is inside a mock Mayan pyramid, and the inside is extremely decorative. For a simple family coaster, they put in quite the effort here. To sum it all up, while this coaster isn't meant for the thrill seekers, it's much better suited for little Timmy and Grandma Florence. Number 7 is Pony Express, a moto coaster by Italian manufacturer Zamperla. Many aspiring enthusiasts have told me they're afraid of launches. I often get asked what a good launch coaster for beginners would be. Well, after my visit to Knott's, I can say that the answer is Pony Express. This coaster is small and mild, but still a lot of fun. A lot of that has to do with the trains. These well-themed trains have a unique restraint system that allows you to sit in a horseback riding position. Unlike Steeplechase at Coney Island, the ride's layout doesn't meander around the short course. Instead, it mixes things up by going over park paths and even through a tunnel. There's no doubt the kids will have a blast with this one. And while I personally prefer more intense launch coasters, it's definitely possible for adults to get a kick out of it. I admit, I had a good time on this ride. By the way, if you want to purchase the shirt I'm wearing here, you can view my merchandise below this this video, or head to my Teespring shop in the description. Your purchase will support this channel. Number 6 is Sierra Sidewinder, a spinning coaster by German manufacturer Mock Rides. This is the marquee attraction of the park's Camp Snoopy area. It is also the only mock spinning coaster I've ridden. Though the track did have a few rough spots, I found the coaster to be quite enjoyable overall. I found the spinning feature to be well utilized, and I thought it was more fun than nauseating. And unlike the Gerstlauer spinners, the seats on the ride vehicles face outwards, giving you a much better view of your surroundings. The layout itself is small and compact, winding over park paths, the queue line, and even the balloon race ride. 
I always love when rides use their surroundings to their advantage. I will admit, it was one of the rougher spinning coasters I've ridden. Like I've mentioned before, there are certain spots of the track where you get rattled around in your seat, but it really wasn't painful, so I didn't mind it. If you're a fan of spinning coasters, I recommend giving this one a shot. Like what you see so far? Feel free to subscribe and hit the bell to turn on notifications. Number 5 is Montezuma's Revenge, a flywheel shuttle loop coaster by German manufacturer Schwarzkopf. On the surface, this ride may not seem like much, just a simple launch and a single loop. However, the historical significance of this coaster alone makes it a must-ride in my book. It was the first flywheel launch coaster ever built, opening all the way back in 1978. It was also the tallest roller coaster on Earth at the time of its opening. To this day, it is the only flywheel launch coaster left in America, and one of only three left in the entire world. Even after all these years, the ride is still immensely popular with guests, and the park clearly has no intention of taking it down. During my first visit, four mechanics worked on getting the ride running when it closed down, which just goes to show the care Knotts has for this ride. As for the coaster itself, it's very simple to describe, but I enjoyed it considerably. The first launch forwards was wildly entertaining, and like other Schwarzkopf rides, the loop gave enough g-force for me to gray out on. The trip backwards was equally as exciting, not only passing through the loop again, but zooming through the station and up another upward spike. As short as the ride seems, there is plenty enough to make it a memorable experience. It's one of those coasters you're guaranteed to come off with a dumb grin on your face. Number 4 is Silver Bullet, an inverted coaster by Swiss manufacturer B&M. I'd say this is a taller, longer, and more intense version of Great Bear at Hershey Park. Like Great Bear, it is incredibly smooth and takes riders over the water and the paths below. However, I found Silver Bullet to be more forceful than Great Bear. Silver Bullet has six inversions, the most out of all of the park's roller coasters. These inversions are forceful, sleek, and thankfully lack headbanging. The corkscrews will send the blood rushing to your feet, and the final helix may cause you to gray out a bit. Speaking of the final helix, there's a unique near-miss element that happens here. Towards the bottom, there is a hose that shoots water towards the passengers. You come pretty close to this jet of water, and you honestly get the illusion that you're about to be soaked. It's the little touches like this that make an already great ride even better. I rode in both the front and back row, and I found both to be equally smooth. Still though, both rows do have their advantages over each other. The front row gives an unobstructed view as you soar through the park, while the back row is significantly more intense. I recommend getting rides in both rows and see which one you prefer. If you're a fan of inverted coasters, Silver Bullet is right up your alley. Number 3 is Accelerator, an accelerator coaster by Swiss manufacturer Intamin. Before King to Khan Top Thrill Dragster, this was the first Intamin accelerator ever made. It was also the first coaster on Earth to use a hydraulic cable launch. And I have to say, this ride holds up extremely well. It may be short, but Accelerator's intensity and overall sense of speed makes it more than worthy of its acclaim. Right from the start, you'll strap into the colorful 1950s Chevy-style trains with non-restrictive lap bars. While I still love King Ka, I will admit that these kind of rides are a lot more fun with the lap bars. The initial launch is incredibly smooth, and when you sit in the front row, the unblocked wind in your face makes it feel a lot more forceful. You're bound to feel the g-forces on this launch, no doubt about it. While it isn't as fast or tall as something like Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar Point, Accelerator benefits from having more airtime at the peak of its top hat. Plus, it adds a short twister section after the top hat, giving the layout more variety. Moreover, this twister section is a great opportunity to keep your hands up and have a blast. As far as launch coasters go, Accelerator is exceptional. Number 2 is Hang Time, an infinity coaster by German manufacturer Gerslauer. I think it's safe to say that this coaster is far superior to the old boomerang it replaced. I admit I've never been on that boomerang, but I can't see it being anywhere close to as good as this. The best way to describe this ride is like a fine spaghetti dish, a compact, winding masterpiece packed with flavorful elements. First, let's talk about its signature Beyond Vertical Drop. As if the size and shape of this drop wasn't intimidating enough, it also features a clever holding brake. This brake adds an element of suspense to the drop, and listening to the terrified passengers' reactions makes it even more enjoyable. The drop itself will send you plummeting downwards and straight into the first back-to-back -back inversions, a negative G-stall loop, and an Immelman. 
I can safely say the park was not lying when they named this ride Hang Time. At the peak of these inversions, you hang upside down for what feels like much longer than it actually is, and the excellent lap bar restraints make it even more exciting. The rest of the ride will feature a few more inversions and even an excellent airtime moment towards the end. This coaster is just non-stop excitement, and it really is amazing how they could fit something so big into such a small space. Kudos to Gerslauer for giving Knott such an incredible attraction, and kudos to the fine folks at KCL for the incredible light package they gave this coaster at night. It is beautiful. Finally, we've come to number one, and it's Ghost Rider, a wooden coaster by American manufacturer Custom Coasters International, with recent track work by American manufacturer Great Coasters International. This is one of those coasters that I immediately gave two big thumbs up after riding. It is by far one of the best wooden coasters I've ever been on. It ranks up there with other masterpieces like Lightning Rod, Mystic Timbers, and El Toro. First of all, the airtime is exquisite. It pretty much feels like the train is falling out from under you. It's hard to describe, but picture it as one of those Wile E. Coyote cartoons where he literally stretches as he falls off a cliff. This visual is exactly how I would describe the feeling. Parts of the track are surrounded by the support structure, adding near-miss elements to the already thrilling hills. Plus, as if airtime wasn't enough, the layout features long, unbanked turns that pull some insane laterals, and you'll feel like the train is going to tip over sideways. These are some of the strongest laterals I've ever experienced. Furthermore, the track is incredibly smooth thanks to a recent retracking by GCI. While I don't mind some roughness on a wooden coaster, a smooth one is always a welcome ride in my book. It's no wonder why this coaster regularly has a 2 hour wait, it really is that amazing. To sum it all up, if you can only ride one thing at knots, Ghost Rider is the way to go. Thanks for watching everyone, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can check out my website at ThemeParkCrazy.com. This is Theme Park Crazy, and I'll see you all next time.